Throughout history, humans have existed side by side with bacteria and viruses. From the bubonic plague to smallpox, we've evolved to resist them, and in response, they've developed new ways of infecting us. We've had antibiotics for almost a century, ever since Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin. In response, bacteria have responded by evolving antibiotic resistance. The battle is endless. Because we spend so much time with pathogens, we sometimes develop a kind of natural stalemate. In this video, we're going to look into what would happen if we were suddenly exposed to deadly bacteria and viruses that have been absent for thousands of years or that we've never met before. In a study, NASA scientists successfully revived bacteria that had been encased in a frozen pond in Alaska for 32,000 years. The microbes, called Carnobacterium pleistocenium, had been frozen since the Pleistocene period when woolly mammoths still roamed the Earth. Once the ice melted, they began swimming around, seemingly unaffected. Two years later, scientists managed to revive an 8 million year old bacterium that had been lying dormant in ice beneath the surface of a glacier in the Beacon and Mullins Valleys of Antarctica. In the same study, bacteria were also revived from ice that was over 100,000 years old. In 2014, an ancient giant virus was discovered by French scientists. The pithovirus Sibericum virus was found frozen in a deep layer of the Siberian permafrost, a permanently frozen layer of soil. But after it thawed, it became infectious once again. This giant is still decidedly microscopic, but in the diminutive world of viruses, it is larger than normal specimens, measuring 1.5 microns in length and 0.5 microns in diameter. Giant viruses are loosely defined as the ones that you can see under a regular microscope. The ancient pathogen was discovered buried 100 feet down in the frozen ground and had been lying dormant for at least 30,000 years. According to the scientists, the contagion posed no danger to humans or animals, but as the ground becomes exposed, other viruses could be unleashed. Other bacteria that can form spores and so could survive in permafrost include tetanus and botulism, a rare illness that can cause paralysis and even prove fatal. In the summer of 2016, anthrax killed a 12-year-old boy in a remote part of Siberia. At least 20 other people from the Yamal Peninsula were diagnosed with the potentially deadly disease after approximately 100 suspected cases were hospitalized. Additionally, more than 2,300 reindeer in the area died from the infection. The likely cause was thawing permafrost. According to Russian officials, thawed permafrost released previously immobile spores of Bacillus anthracis into nearby water and soil and then into the food supply. The outbreak was the region's first in 75 years. In the early 20th century alone, more than a million reindeer died from anthrax. Although anthrax occurs naturally in all soil and outbreaks unrelated to permafrost can occur, extensive permafrost thaw could increase the number of people exposed to anthrax bacteria. In a paper published in Global Health Action, it was suggested that as a consequence of permafrost melting, the vectors of deadly infections from the 18th and 19th centuries may come back, especially near the cemeteries where the victims of these infections were buried. It's not easy to dig deep graves, so most of these carcasses are buried close to the surface, scattered among 7,000 burial grounds in northern Russia. Researchers have predicted for years that one of the effects of global warming could be that whatever's frozen in permafrost, such as ancient bacteria, might be released as temperatures climb. And permafrost is indeed thawing, at higher latitudes and to greater depths than ever before. In the summer of 2016, however, there was a heat wave in the regional Yamal Peninsula, and the temperatures hovered around 35 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees warmer than usual. The difference possibly expanded or deepened the thaw and mobilized microorganisms usually stuck in rigid earth. Permafrost thaw overall could become widespread with temperatures only slightly higher than those at present, and we're definitely seeing heat waves in higher latitudes more often. What thawing permafrost could unleash depends on the hardiness of the infectious agent involved. A lot of microorganisms cannot survive in extreme cold, but some can withstand it for many years. According to Jean-Michel Clavery, the head of the Mediterranean Institute of Microbiology and professor at A. Marseille University in France, Bacillus anthracis are special because they're sporulating bacteria. Spores are extremely resistant and, like seeds, can survive for longer than a century. Human viruses from even further back could also make an appearance. 
For instance, the microorganisms living on and within the early humans who populated the Arctic could still be frozen in the soil. There are hints that Neanderthals and Denisovans could have settled in northern Siberia and were plagued by various viral diseases, some of which we know, like smallpox, Spanish flu, and the bubonic plague, for example. But as the Earth warms, more permafrost will melt. Under normal circumstances, superficial permafrost layers about 50 centimeters deep melt every summer. But now global warming is gradually exposing older permafrost layers. Pathogenic viruses that can infect humans or animals might be preserved in old permafrost layers, including some that have caused global epidemics in the past. It was reported that 15% of Antarctica's surface melted on Christmas Eve 2019, and there was record warm water under its most precarious glacier, the Thwaites Glacier. Smaller glaciers are also feeling the heat. A climate change report found that glaciers in Europe, East Africa, and elsewhere could lose more than 80% of ice mass by the end of the century. Meanwhile, permafrost in the Arctic Circle is thawing at a rapid pace. Permafrost covers 24% of the Northern Hemisphere, an equivalent to around 9 million square miles, according to Columbia's Earth Institute. Scientists predict that even if we were to limit warming to 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, we'd eventually lose 40% of that. From February 2014 through February 2015, nine of the 12 months were either the warmest or second warmest on record. The average temperature across the globe has increased 1.3 degrees Fahrenheit, 0.7 degrees Celsius in the last 100 years, while the average temperature of the surface layer of permafrost has increased by 5 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 degrees Celsius, and has diminished in depth by 7%. Add to this the fact that rich mineral resources and oil reserves in the Arctic region are being increasingly mined and drilled, which also causes the melting of permafrost. And you can begin to understand why it becomes urgent to look at the possibility that infectious viral pathogens slumber in ancient layers of permafrost. While the idea of bringing a 30,000-year-old virus back to life is pretty cool, at least in the sci-fi world, does it pose a threat? What are the chances that some Neanderthal-killing bug that modern folks have no natural immunity to and little ability to fight off will surface to wreak havoc on humanity? It seems the probability has gone from zero to not zero, meaning it's not hugely likely. However, as recently as 2014, it didn't seem like the pithovirus or anything similar could exist in the modern world. And of course, coronavirus has certainly given us all something to think about. In effect, Infectious agents buried in the permafrost are unknowable and unpredictable in their timing and ferocity. Thus, researchers say thawing permafrost is not our biggest worry when it comes to infectious diseases and global warming. The more immediate and certain threat to humans is the widening geographical ranges of modern infectious diseases and their carriers such as mosquitoes as the earth warms. Malaria is seen at higher elevations and latitudes as temperatures climb, and the cholera agent, Vibrio cholerae, replicates better at higher temperatures. Unlike the zombie microbes lurking in the permafrost, modern spreading diseases are more of a known quantity, and there are proven ways to curb them, mapping trends, eliminating mosquito breeding sites, and spraying insecticides. Of course, dramatically lowering fossil fuel emissions to combat climate change could tackle both threats, the resurgence of ancient and deadly pathogens and the widening ranges of infectious diseases in one shot. So it seems, in order to help prevent the chances of these ancient viruses rearing their ugly heads again, we should be concentrating more on reducing our greenhouse gases. Do you think we should be worried about ancient viruses? How do you think the world would cope? Let us know in the comments below, and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.